What's up, YouTube? I'm Malcolm, and welcome to episode 10 of Big Mac Breakdowns. First off, I'd like to say that episode 10 is a big milestone for me, and if you've been rocking with me since episode 1, I hope that you've seen the growth in the channel, and I also want to thank you for your love and support, and if you're new and this is your first video, welcome because you're in for a treat, and I say you're in for a treat because today we'll be discussing the Packers' new franchise quarterback, Jordan Love, and I just thought for schnitz and giggles that it'll be only right that we made episode 10 for number 10 and then episode 10 we'll be discussing three ways that the packers can ensure that jordan love will be successful in the 2023 season and beyond now my first point of emphasis is to lean on the scheme like i said in previous videos that i love this matt lafleur scheme of course we didn't run it to its most effectiveness because we had aaron Rodgers behind center and if you don't know Aaron Rodgers tends to change plays. Pretty much wasn't a big fan of the scheme, and he voiced that quite a bit. But I believe that Jordan Love will buy into the scheme. Given in the 2020 season, Aaron Rodgers probably had the best year of his career, as well as the MVP season. Now, I'm not saying that Jordan Love is going to have similar or same success to Aaron Rodgers. But all in all, I believe that he is more than capable of running this scheme to his most effectiveness. And hopefully it'll propel him into being a great quarterback, given that it's a quarterback friendly scheme and bringing the championship back to title town. And as most of us know, the way to run this scheme to his most effectiveness is to run the ball, run the damn ball. And when Jordan Love has been on the field, the Packers have shown effectiveness in the run game, be it that the running backs averaged 4.7 yards per carry in the one and a half games that Jordan Love played in 2021. Against the Kansas City Chiefs and Detroit Lions, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, and even Patrick Taylor so that no matter what the defensive front was, that they were still more than capable of being more effective in a run game. And with that being said, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon should be at least getting 10 touches per game. And I believe that Matt LaFleur and his Packers offense know in order for the play action to open up that these guys will have to be committed to the run and staying with the run. Regardless if they only get one or two yards on a play, staying committed to the run will open up the play action. And that'll lead me to my next point. I believe that a key to Jordan Love's success is being able to run play action. In the 2022 preseason, Jordan Love graded the highest win making play action passes. According to PFF, Jordan Love had an 82.0 grade and that Jordan Love went 12 for 19 on play action pass attempts with 132 yards added on. Not to mention that Love's lone TD in the 2022 regular season was a 63-yard play action pass to Christian Watson. Another key to success for Jordan Love is being able to get the ball out with quick hitters and quick throws. Between the 2022 regular season and preseason, Jordan Love had a 2.4 second average time to throw. Jordan Love seems more comfortable being able to get the ball out quick and on time and letting his receivers do most of the legwork. On film, Love seems more comfortable throwing short hitch routes and quick out routes. It just seems like once he gets to the top of his drop and he knows where he's going, he knows how to get it there accurately and efficiently. But with that being said, Jordan Love will need to work on his back shoulder throws and quick fade routes. But in 2022, he did show some signs of improvement. Matt LaFleur will also need to be able to scheme up on receivers. LaFleur should implement more condensed formations, giving receivers free releases off the line so that they're not getting jammed. The Packers faced a lot of press, man, particularly cover one in the 2022 season. And with a lack of separators at the receiver position this past season, the Packers often struggled when facing cover one. And not just the pass game struggled, the running game struggled as well, be it that when teams play cover one, one or single high safeties they were able to bring an extra defender down into the box and be able to play the run as well a passing concept that Matt LaFleur should bring back that he used quite a bit in 2020 is the mesh concept mesh is an effective passing concept to scheme up and receivers this concept forces defenses to make quick decisions and communicate on the fly and with the slightest hesitation receivers can get open underneath or behind the linebackers making it easy for the quarterback to pick the defense apart mesh is also a concept that works versus man and zone due to the multiple possibilities of how the play can be executed now i'm not saying run this concept as much as the chargers or the jaguars but by studying this concept be it 
stated that it is popular throughout pretty much the whole league and even in college. But with that being said, it shows how efficient that this passing concept works. Malafleur will also need to make it a point of emphasis to get the tight ends involved. For example, Josiah DeGuar has been a consistent, and I mean consistent, target when Jordan Love plays on bootleg play action, having three receptions for 23 yards on the 2022 preseason. Now, I know those aren't wowing stats, but DeGuar also had 82 yards on five receptions in 2021 when Jordan Love played in the Kansas City and Detroit game. He also had one touchdown. But being that Josiah DeGuar is heading into the last year of his contract, the Packers will need to invest into the tight end position, be it that this might be one of the deepest tight end classes in the 2023 NFL draft. You could probably pencil in Packers drafting someone like Michael Mayer, Darnell Washington, Dalton Kincaid, Luke Musgrave, Sam Laporta, Zach Koontz, etc, etc. There are a plethora of tight ends in this 2023 NFL draft and I expect the Packers to come out with at least one of them, if not two. Moving on to my next point of emphasis and that's using Jordan Love's legs. Back in 2020 at the NFL Combine, Jordan Love ran a 4.740 yard dash and I know that doesn't seem like a lot given that a lot of quarterbacks are coming out more athletic but for reference that 4.740 is comparable to quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Justin Herbert. Three quarterbacks that not only show they're able to get out the pocket and extend plays with their legs, but in a minimal capacity, they are also able to do a few read options here and there. And Josh Allen is pretty much a running back at this point, the way that the Bills use him. And I'm not saying the Packers should use Jordan Love like Josh Allen by any means, but being able to keep the defense on their toes by using Jordan Love's athleticism. Now, Jordan Love's career stats for his rushing yards isn't wowing by any means, be it that he is listed at only having 26 rush yards in his career, but PFF has him at having 33 yards when he is scrambling. And if you go to his preseason stats, he has four attempts for 58 yards, 42 of those yards being on scrambles and 16 being on design QB runs. If you go back to that 49ers game, I believe that Jordan Love had at least two read option runs for first downs. And like I said at the beginning of this point of emphasis is that Jordan Love has sneaky athleticism. And I believe there's nothing wrong with the, having an occasional read option to keep the defense guessing. And that's for my last point of emphasis, it is to get Jordan Love weapons. The Packers have pretty much been the laughing stock of the league when it comes to investing in wide receiver. And if you ask me or any other Packer fan, that's probably what drove Aaron Rodgers mad. But honestly, I don't care about what Aaron Rodgers is feeling at this point. I just want the Packers to make it a point of emphasis to obtain weapons for Jordan Love to make his life a little bit easier as a Packer. I mentioned it in previous videos, but I'll mention it again. The Packers' current depth at wide receiver stands at Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Samori Toure. Those three guys were our 2022 draft picks picked in the second, fourth, and seventh round respectively. We end up signing Bo Melton towards the end of the 2022 season off the Seattle Seahawks practice squad. We also had Jeff Cotton, who was a UDFA back in 2020 and bounced around the league a little bit. And again, at tight end, we have Josiah DeGuara, who we drafted in the third round back in 2020. And lastly, we have Tyler Davis, who we signed off the Colts practice squad a few years ago, and he was a sixth round pick. And out of those pass catchers, Jordan Love has completed a pass to Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Josiah DeGuara, Samori Toure, and Tyler Davis. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only Packer fan that feels that the team needs to obtain a veteran presence. And we currently haven't made any wide receiver moves at this moment, but I do see some Someone like Jarvis Landry being a legit option. Jarvis Landry has been a reliable pass catcher for quite some time in the league. And I believe that he could be a potential Randall Cobb replacement, hopefully for a decent price. And I can just think of the possibility of him playing in the slot, being able to move the chains for Jordan Love. Be it that he is not only a reliable pass catcher and separator, but he's also able to get to it after the catch. Another low-key wide receiver prospect is Alameda Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus previously played for the Atlanta Falcons this past season. Zacchaeus had a fairly decent season in 2022 for the Falcons, and I could see him as a temporary slot option for Jordan Love for this upcoming season. He's familiar with the West Coast offense, and I see him being able to work in the slot, and he's also pretty decent after the catch as well, and I believe that he could also take some gadget snaps as well. The Packers could also prioritize getting Corey Davis back in the Jets trade for Aaron Rodgers. Corey Davis could be a reliable pass catching option, 
and he's also familiar with the Matt LaFleur scheme, be it that Matt LaFleur was his offensive coordinator in Tennessee. And now it's obvious that the Packers need to draft receiver, but I think in particular that the Packers need to draft receivers that's not only separators, but that can get to it after the catch and be playmakers. Now, in my opinion, the best candidates that have these attributes are Jackson Smith and Jigba, Zay Flowers, and Jalen Cropper, whom of which I mentioned on this channel already. In addition to Tank Dell, Josh Downs, and Demario Douglas, these guys have proved on the college level that they can not only separate from DBs, but that they have a lot to offer after the catch. And though all but Jackson Smith and Jigba go against the Packers' guidelines when it comes to receivers, I believe that these receivers can come in right away and be an impact in this Matt LaFleur offense, whether as a receiver, gadget player, slot receiver, Receiver, and these prospects have return value as well. But all of this being said, the Packers will need to show that they are more than willing to invest in Jordan Love moving forward and not leaving him hanging out to drive, given that they might not value the receiver position or tight end position. Actually getting high-end receiving talent with premium picks. And if you look in the past few drafts, yes, these drafts have been wide receiver deep, but in most cases, especially if you look back at the 2021 class, there's a drop-off between the receivers that were drafted in the top end of the first round and everyone else. Now, that'll do it for my three points of emphasis and just a little recap i have lean on the scheme use jordan love's legs and athleticism and get weapons i feel like those are the three key things in jordan love's success in this 2023 season and beyond the offseason is still young so there's still a lot left to learn about what the packers plan to do for this upcoming season but all in all i believe that if they want to get back to the super bowl they know what to do looking at other teams blueprints emphasizing getting weapons leaning on the run of course playing great defense but all in all investing in your quarterbacks investing in your investment and with that being said i would love to hear from you down in the comments let me know what you think that the packers need to do to ensure that that jordan love is a successful franchise quarterback and what else does the team need to do i've seen that we've been addressing the special teams quite a bit this offseason who do you think we need to obtain on defense who do you think we need to obtain on offense i would love to hear from you down in the comments if you haven't please like share and subscribe I'll be sure to get back to you, but in the meantime, I will see you later, and go Pack Go.